Raymond Dalio started sharing that the Fed also made a mistake in presuming that this is a regular cycle in our economy, and he believes that the Fed made a mistake in this belief. They were under the impression that accelerating economic growth and reducing unemployment would lead to an increase in prices. As a result of a variety of factors, we no longer inhabit the same planet. A world in which there is a significant amount of unused capacity, a world in which digitalization and other trends are prevalent, but in which this is not the most important thing. The fact that we are getting increasingly closer to the end of the power that central banks have to stimulate the economy is the most important matter. We are exposed to a substantial number of asymmetric risks. If there is a slowdown in the economy, which is likely given that we are getting late in the cycle, there is a lack of competence on the part of central banks to be able to be beneficial to the economy and to counteract that. And this is happening at a time when there is a wide disparity in the distribution of wealth. Therefore, if the left and the right as well as the rich and the poor are at each other's blades at this time, and this is when times are good, just think what it will be like when we have a downturn and there is an inability of central banks to respond to that. He believes the Fed miscalculated in presuming that this is a regular cycle, and they concur with him. They believe that if GDP were to accelerate and unemployment was to drop, inflation would result. Due to many factors, we now exist in a different reality. In a world where digitalization, surplus capacity, etc. are the norm, that is not the most important thing. The fact that central banks will soon be unable to stimulate the economy is a major development. There is a significant imbalance of danger. We are late in the business cycle, so a downturn is possible. Central banks' inability to be stimulative and reverse that has emerged at a time of extreme wealth polarization. Imagine what it will be like when we have a downturn and central banks are unable to respond to that, given that the left and the right or the rich and the poor are at each other's throats now, when circumstances are good. Thus, the global deterioration necessitated a late-year Federal Reserve policy shift. He thinks keeping up with the changes we're discussing and responding accordingly is most vital. First and foremost, Ray Dalio thinks every portfolio should be diversified. Even though gold is essential to portfolio diversification, he thinks everyone should have a focused portfolio. Ray Dalio believes that having a balanced portfolio is the most important thing they can do right now because wealth can be moved, not lost. Thus, a lot of money has been borrowed to buy businesses and assets, making the global economy highly leveraged. They have taken out loans in order to repurchase their shares of stock. The market says that the whole move of leverage long is a sign of weakness. Ray Dalio is trying to explain that this kind of portfolio is risky and that gold is one of the things that can help make it less risky. He thinks it should always be a certain part of a portfolio because it does a good job of diversifying the portfolio in a certain environment. He also thinks the environment is more likely to be dangerous these days. That atmosphere makes economic stimulation difficult and currency depreciation desirable. Bonds are currency. One receives a lot of money over time if one possesses a bond or debt instrument. When there are a lot of obligations like that, a lot of debt, or even unfunded obligations like pension or healthcare obligations, there is no effective monetary policy to lower interest rates and stimulate so we need to print money and run larger deficits. He thinks we'll enter an environment where larger deficits are increasingly monetized. When this happens, the value of the currencies go down. He thinks that things will get worse over the next one, two, and three years in a slow, steady way. There will be a situation where there is too much capacity. That is being restructured, and political issues come into play. There will be an effect and a risk, but the question is not if a recession will happen, but when. He thinks that this is happening everywhere. It was visible from Asia to Europe to the United States. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture, and then put a time frame on that. We are late in both the short-term and long-term debt cycles, which are the main reasons. That is the ability of central banks to create growth. It can be judged by how much they can lower interest rates and do things like quantity rotated easing and still have that bought, and that's a problem. It is an issue that will happen in the next year or two. You can see it in Europe, Japan, and even some parts of the United States. We also have a big difference in wealth, which causes the classic political conflict that is very similar to the 1930s. That means that both of those are more polarized and have more extremes. 
and that will be important because changing policies will have a big impact. For example, when we cut taxes on corporations, stock prices go up because after taxes, people have more money, so they pay more for stocks. Things will change. So, we have this polarity, which like the 1930s, makes it hard to get people excited in the same way. Also, China, which is a new country, is competing with the United States, which is an old country. And that creates a theme, a kind of protectionist environment that reminds me a lot of the 1930s. It leads to all kind of problems and gets in the way of how the economy works. For example, supply lines, or to put it in another way, we built an economy where different parts depended on each other and where supply lines worked in a certain way to be efficient. Now that we are in a place where there is conflict, we need to make sure that we are safe and that our countries are safe. Independence is getting closer. The US says, I don't want your technologies. And China says, I can't count on you to give me your technologies. This change in the relationship changes the way it works, which also has an effect on the economy. These things have a lot in common with what Ray Dalio said in the 1930s. They'll be in charge. They are evolutionary factors, but in the next one, two, or three years, they will cause a paradigm shift. The world we live in now will be very different from the world we live in tomorrow. The world we were in started in 2008 and had to do with central banks printing money and stimulating, but that is reaching its limit. So, he thinks there will be a shift in the way things are. What does Ray Dalio mean when he talks about depression? Here's what he said. From 1929 to 1932, the economy went down, and there were a lot of people out of work. That's how much the economy has dropped, and it's about 10%. Ray Dalio will say yes if you ask him if he thinks we're in that situation. How was that taken care of? In 1933, they printed a lot of money and the government made programs that are similar to the ones we have now. Both the interest rates and the dynamics are zero, so it's the same thing. The money then leads to growth from that point on. How long does it take for the stock market to go above its highs? How long does it take for the economy to get back to where it was before? for a long time is the correct answer. Ray Dalio is saying that we are in the same situation and that has happened many times before. It's just the newest one and there's a reason for that. So no, we are not in a recession. This is a breakdown of an operation that he just talked about in terms of how it dealt with money, credit, and other things. He thinks that what you'll see is a mix of printing money and giving it to other people. He thinks that process will take between two and three years. Then you have to start over. They have to come up with ideas. Human creativity has been the most powerful force throughout time. We can call it being able to change. So you're going to see these changes and that's the power of being able to adapt. Ray Dalio did a study that goes back 500 years and shows real GDP or economic activity from that time period. And there's a line where you can barely see these depressions which is what we're calling them. When you look at that part, it looks like GDP falls when unemployment goes up by 10%. It doesn't last long because the most powerful force is the force of change and creativity if we can work well together. The world will be very different because there will be a new world order, but it will pass and be creative because all we deal with now is money and credit. What can you say about Ray Dalio's information about what he researched throughout the last 500 years of history and economic cycles? What are your thoughts on this too?